Good evening, sisters and brothers, family and friends. Thank you so very much for taking time to join us this evening. Make sure I don't have on this mute button so you all can be able to hear what I say. Uh, we've been waiting for you all afternoon. Hopefully you've been waiting for us. Prior to we get started, uh, we need some housekeeping, what we call housekeeping rules to share with you. So Hannah Decker, uh, one of the executive assistants to the secretary treasurer will go over what those golden rules are. This event is being held as a webinar. This means that all attendees are able to see the panelists, but the panelists cannot see the attendees, nor can the attendees see each other. As an attendee, you have joined in a listen-only mode. Sign language interpreters are available if needed. The names of the interpreters for this town hall are Ashley Middleton and Tiffany Ransayer. Both interpreters will be spotlighted on the screen during the presentation. If you should have any questions during the webinar, please use the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Questions will be answered in the Q&A section by panelists during the town hall as available. Please note that only those on the computer will have access to the Q&A section. Those on the phone or watching live on Facebook will not. Two poll votes will be conducted during this town hall. Only those on the computer will be able to participate. Again, those on the phone or watching live on Facebook will not. We do ask that you please ensure that you are not on the USPS clock for any duration of this presentation. And as always, we are unable to approve any registrations that come from the USPS.gov email address. So when you're registering for any Zoom webinar or meeting, please make sure that you use a personal or a local email address. Thank you, Hannah. And furthermore, a few shout outs to a few people for joining us this evening. First, let me thank all of our national offices, the national business agents and our resident offices uh, who are listening in. Also a shout out to our rank and file committee, which as you know, works closely with the negotiating committee. Uh, our retirees, thank you for being here and to the APW Auxiliary and to the contract action team, better known as the collective action team. They are meowing in the neighborhood close to you and available to assist the locals in any way that they can. If you need them to come and help your members get fired up like the rest of us are fired up, send them an email at ncc at apw.org and they will get in touch with you. Let me introduce to you your National Executive Board. Uh, starting with my left, my left, I guess is everybody else's left is a good thing since I can't see. But uh, it's AJ Jones, Eastern Region Coordinator, Debbie Zaretti, Executive Vice President, Steve Brooks, Director of Support Services, Kenneth Beasley, Southern Regional Coordinator, Omar Gonzalez, the Western Region Coordinator, Tiffany Foster, Northeast Regional Coordinator, Michael Foster, Director of the Motor Vehicle Service, Sharon Stone, Central Region Coordinator, Van Zimmerman, our Director of Industrial Relations, Lamont Brooks, the Director of the Clerk Division, and I think I've covered them all. And last but not least, the President of the American Postal Workers Union, Mark Demonstein. As we all know, the current collective bargaining agreement between the American Postal Workers Union and the United States Postal Service expires on September the 20th, 2021. Negotiations for a new contract will begin on June the 22nd, 2021. Your national union and your national negotiators will be well prepared for this critical battle. And with that, I give you our Executive Vice President, Sister Debbie Soretti. Good evening, everybody. We thank you for joining us. And I want to introduce to you um, our lead negotiator, Mark Demonstein. He's been the lead negotiator uh, for the last two successful contracts. And he is going to address you on the importance of negotiations and the role that you guys can play for our future success. With your help, we can do it again. So with that, Mark, it's all yours. Up mute. There we go. Thanks, Sister Soretti, and uh, good evening to APW family. We're fired up and ready to go. We appreciate you joining us. Just so you know, there's far more numbers watching this than is on the screen because people are watching on a number of other platforms at the same time. 
We're pleased everybody's tuned in. Got a big challenging task, but a big, huge opportunity ahead of us. Very proud and honored to be your lead negotiator. And I wanted to share a few observations. I'll try to keep them short because we want to get to your questions. And of course, we want to we want to, uh, all of the negotiating committee members to be able to share some thoughts with uh, you this evening. So we're here to share and we're here to listen uh, to, your, to your questions as well. Just as a, 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 a quick point, we won the right to collective bargaining. Collective bargaining is simply negotiations where uh, under the law, management has to sit down with the union, the union with management and try to hammer out a negotiated agreement but it's a right that most workers don't have. So when we talk about the opportunity, the privilege, the honor, the opportunity, we're talking about something very different than most of our family members who work in non-union places, most workers who work in non-union places, most of our neighbors. Uh, they have what's called an open door policy at work. The management puts out a nice handbook and manual. They say, we love, we, we, we're so happy you're working here. If you've got any problems, come see us. We've got an open door policy. Of course, what they really mean by an open door policy, if you don't like our dictates, if you don't like what we decide as the owners of the company or the bosses, you don't like your pay, if you don't like who got what promotion, what job, what better days off, or anything else, uh, the door's open, you can see your way out. And that's what happens in a non-union environment. Here we are in a union environment where management is forced, compelled to sit down with the union, which is you. You're doing it through us, but it's you. Uh, and they have to negotiate over wages, hours, and condition of employment. Doesn't mean we're gonna get everything we want. It doesn't mean we're gonna get everything we need, but we have the opportunity to hammer out, bargain, and move forward. And our history has been that collective bar bargaining has brought vast improvement for postal workers and our families. So where did it come from? From a 1970 unlawful, great, historic postal strike where 200,000 postal workers said enough is enough, put the jobs on there, put their jobs on the line and really stormed the heavens, took on their bosses, took on the government, took on the president of the United States. And as it turned on, they had to take, take on the, the troops that were brought in to replace them. Uh, and they won. And the main product of that victory, on top of the respect and dignity and unity that was gained with that historic struggle, was the right that postal workers won for collective bargaining over wages and benefits. That's why the federal sector is that we're different than them. They do not have the right. Our sisters and brothers who work in the federal government, even where they have you, do not have the right to bargain over wages and benefits like we do. And so the torch has been passed to us, but we should always remember, always remember that the, the field that was plowed by the courage of those who came before us. So let me share a few observations and I'll, then I'd like to uh, get to some questions. One is negotiations are never easy. We are not negotiating with ourselves. We're not looking at, uh, at ourselves in the mirror saying, oh, that's a good idea. I agree. We're negotiating with an adversary that has very different goals than we do. Our goal is generally is to uplift postal workers and our families and our communities. Theirs is to always save money, reduce costs, increase flexibility and in all, the, the, all, the, all that that means, increase subcontracting. So it's a battle. It really is a battle. And I think that's important for all of us to keep in mind. Now, when we go into negotiations, we're not the only ones bringing proposals. Both sides can bring demands, proposals, we bargain over anything that has to do with wages, hours, and conditions of employment. So the key for us will be to achieve an overall agreement. Not everything, as I said, that we necessarily want, but an overall agreement that advances the well-being of postal workers. The we are going to have to and will prioritize. Sir, uh, our proposals. There's, there's many, many things that we want, many, many needs out there. But we have to decide what's most important. Working together hard as a bargaining committee. And by the way, I, I failed to mention in the beginning, the, the, the core bargaining committee is eight people, eight elected officers. It's myself as your lead negotiator, very proud to, 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 to be there. Uh, our executive vice president, Debbie Ceretti, 
Secretary Treasurer Liz Powell, uh, Industrial Relations Director Vance Zimmerman, who's also the Chief Spokesperson at the table. And the four craft directors, Lamont Brooks, Clerk Craft, Edelwell Balagon, Maintenance Craft. Hope I got it right that time, brother. Uh, Motor, Motor Vehicle Craft Director Mike Foster and Support Services Director Steve Brooks. Many others are involved, all the assistant craft directors, staff, uh, but we, but that is your core committee. And we're gonna have to work together and we are working together, very unified and very well to prioritize the, the, the proposals that are put on the table. We would, our goal is to reach a voluntary agreement. What do we mean by that? We have a couple choices. We either reach an agreement with management called a tentative agreement. We then turn it over to the rank and file committee. If we get to that point, we'll decide whether it goes out to a vote for all of you as, as, as members. The other alternative in this moment, obviously 1970 was uh, a, a certain state of affairs that led us in a path of militant action in the streets. But short of that, the other alternative is interest arbitration. Uh, the advantage of a voluntary agreement is we're in control of our own destiny. And interest arbitration can be very risky for both sides, uh, not just us. Uh, and it leaves our future in really in the hands of one person. Uh, that's not the best place to be if we can avoid being there. We can't avoid being there. Management has egregious proposals on the table, things that we won't agree to and things that they won't back off on. Or if we have proposals on the table that are just so important to us and management won't move that we have to uh, go to um, arbitration on it. But it's far superior, far superior to reach a voluntary agreement, keep control uh, over our own destiny. The other point, I have two other points is one, we're not an island unto ourselves. We're impacted by what other postal unions have done in their negotiations. We're in impacted by the society as a whole, the relative strength of unions or the relative weakness of, of unions. So all of those things impact and we've taken all of those things into account in our uh, preparation stage. And lastly, and maybe most important, is we, we're in this together. Negotiations come down to power and leverage, power and leverage. We're gonna be negotiating from an economic pie. There's no way to avoid that. The things we want cost money. There is so much money. How big or small that pie is, how much, how much money there is, we have a sale. And that comes down to how much leverage and power we have built. Our, our basic power comes from the fact that we're unique. When I'm sitting at the table and the other negotiators are at the table, it's not way, management's not listening to us we've got fan, because we got fancy titles or we're making our good arguments and we're well prepared and we'll make great arguments. They have to deal with us because of you, because through, through us, you're sitting at the bargaining table with us. And we have to send a message all the way from the workroom floor, uh, every post office in the country, all the way up the line through management, that we're united, we're serious, and we demand and have earned a good contract, especially, especially in this last year and a half, where once again, we're always been essential work, but a deeper and new appreciation for the courageous role, the dedicated role of postal workers at a time that the people of the country needed us the most. Uh, so that's a very clear message to manage from all of us that we demand a good contract. So when we ask people to wear stickers, when we ask people to put on t-shirts, when we ask people to wear wristbands, when we ask people to tune in on a kickoff on the 21st, and you'll hear more about that later, that's sending a message, uh, a unified message, a message of solidarity. And when our allies join with us uh, in the many organizations and individuals who are part of a grand alliance to save the public postal service, they too, uh, are sending a message that helps build our power and leverage. So we're in it together. We're gonna need all of your activism, all of your activity, all of the kind of interest that you're showing tonight by getting on this um, webinar or watching this uh, on live stream, Facebook and, and by other means. So Sister Liz Powell, I'd just like to turn it back to you to start with the questions. I just wanted to share some of those, some of that overview first. Uh, and let's get down down to business, the rest of the business.
Are you on mute? Thank you, President Demistein. Uh, I have a question for you that I've asked on the last two uh, town hall webinars. The reason being is because one from each one of the calls, two o'clock, six o'clock, and now the nine o'clock has the same question. Okay. This one comes from John Rudd, who should be with us on this nine o'clock. We also received a similar question from Brad Sandberg and from Stanley Mason. And they are interested in finding out APW's primary goals during negotiation and what are the main issues we're seeking? Uh, of course, that, that is an excellent question. I've had a little practice now, so we'll see how I do on, on, on the third webinar. Uh, in, in very, very broad stroke, our main goal is to get a darn good contract. The poster behind me, fighting for justice at the bargaining table, we will be doing. But in terms of the specific goals, I've kind of narrowed it down to two terms, protect and enhance. So what do we mean? With the advent of collective bargaining 51 years ago, uh, the, we have made great gains, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work all, all, over the decades, uh, starting with the strike. And so we want to make sure that those gains are protected. They're never set in stone. Collective bargaining means either side can bring changes forward that they want. Uh, so for instance, how many, how many workers do you know? How many family members, how many neighbors and friends do you know that had no layoff protection after six years of career employment? Look what happened to this society with this pandemic where 30 million people found themselves out of work almost overnight. Think about that. It's a wonderful right of job security. Does, does management want to change it? Sure they do. Last round of bargaining, they wanted to change the six years to 15 years for those who did not yet have the six, maybe they were here three years, wanted them to have to wait 15. And for any new hire in the career status later, no protection at all. So that's uh, uh, maybe the most powerful example of protecting. But we have, at, we have the 50 mile limit on excess. It's a wonderful right. Accessing is no fun but it sure beats a layoff and that's the alternative. But when we used to be able to be excess 300, 400, 500 miles, think about what it does to family life, kids being pulled out of school, the, the, the stress on marriages, the, the question of whether a spouse has to leave a job to be able to move, moving expense, all, all of those things. Uh, and so the 50 mile limit on excess is another one of those basic rights. And uh, by the way, Liz, I noticed in a lot of the Q and A's, they came in in advance. There were a number of questions around those two issues. 50 mile limit, are we gonna to fight to maintain it? Absolutely. No layoff protection, we're gonna to fight to maintain it? Absolutely. Um, the COLA, cost of living allowance. We're the only postal union that has full COLA. Some people say, well, you know, our race has been small and they haven't been large by any means, but they're isolating the wage increase and leaving out the COLA. You have to look at our advances by combining the two. Uh, and so we're very, very firm on protecting uh, full COLA. Where we have the career workforce, for instance, in maintenance is in all career workforce. We absolutely want to protect all the career work. We want to enhance and, and increase career work. But where we, where we have it already, we want to fully protect it. The strong conversion opportunities of PSEs also are those kind of things that, that we want to protect. There, there's, there's also things that we just take for granted every day. Uh, seniority and bidding. But that's what takes favoritism so much out of the workplace, that people can gain better days off, better hours of work for, for yourselves and your families uh, by having seniority bidding. It's a wonderful right. So all those things we're going to make sure are, 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 are protected. And then we want to enhance. We, we're not here to tread water, all right? Unions are about improving, working together uh, to improve the lives of ourselves and our families. Uh, and so we definitely want to expand. Let me give you some examples. The two-tier career wage structure. We want it to be one. In 2010, at least at, at uh, grade six, there's, there were five lower steps in the bottom, five lower steps in the top very divisive and unfair. Uh, in the last contract, we were very pleased that we were able to win 
two of those top steps back for level six, one for level five pay. Uh, but we want to continue that march. So we want a singular pay scale, but we don't want a singular pay scale by bringing the top down. We want a singular pay scale by bringing the bottom up. Annual wage increases. You may say, well, is that really enhancing and expanding? We don't get annual wage increases with every contract. Uh, we have we have in, in, in the last two, but in 2010, we had two to five years with no pay raise. There have been times, that even in when mail volume was rising and it's not now and, 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 and revenue was flowing, we had arbitrators uh, 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 rule on four-year contracts and two of those four years, we had no pay raises at all. So it's not guaranteed. So we look at that as enhancing and expanding. We want annual good wage increases. We want to work on the many concerns and legitimate concerns of the PTS in terms of guaranteed hours, uh, in terms of who's doing the bargaining unit work, uh, and, and, and in terms of more hours. We want to uplift the PSEs uh, in terms of both their wages and benefits, because they don't get COLA and don't get some, some other things like as, as career employees do. But we also want a better conversion uh, End in sight. We, we would like to see a, a, a conversion based on time, at least in certain size offices, where then it becomes automatic. And our hardworking PSE members can have that to look forward to as a guarantee. We definitely want to be negotiating and expanding and enhancing this service to the people of the country. It's unacceptable to every one of us on, on this webinar, I'm sure, uh, of management's mismanagement. Uh, of the service and the people are not getting what they deserve and what they've been promised under the law. So we're gonna be bargaining for the common good as well. We're gonna be at the table bargaining for the people of the country. And we also definitely want to expand and enhance uh, our ability and it's been a tough nut to crack. We, 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 we want to expand and enhance the, 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 the environment that people are working in. There's no, legitimate basis of any kind for any worker to go into a workplace and be treated in a hostile work environment. And that's something that's been on our plates for decades and decades, long before I got here. It's been hard to deal with. It's getting worse out there. We know it's getting worse out there. We're gonna be bringing some things to the bargaining table to enhance the, the, the environment that we work in every day. So those are some examples. Sister Paul, I'll turn it back to you. I don't want to go on too long. We're going to work. That's our main goals, protect and enhance and uplift. Thank you. Thank you, President Demonstein. You certainly have given uh, our members and us a lot of things to, to think about. And, and we are going to do the best. I know we are. We're all fired up and we're ready to go and we're ready for whatever is thrown at us as always. Um, the level of our membership involvement in the importance of negotiations and the public, we know is gonna have a great impact on how we make out in these negotiations. We have received over 300 questions and we will not be able to answer each and every one of them on this call, but we will do as many as we can as long as our time allows. Uh, if any of you have any questions related to contract negotiations, please go to the Q&A and type them in there. And uh, between our coordinators, our vice president, our craft directors, hopefully you, I won't say hopefully, you'll get some answers. If you're not able to get them on, on this call, we will make sure that we get back to you with whatever answer we may have to the question that you asked. So at this time, uh, let me bring forth a young man who's working very hard to ensure that our negotiations go as well as expected and putting all kind of props in our place for us to make sure that happens. I give you the Director of Industrial Relations, Vance Zimmerman. Good evening, your brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm just honored to be the Chief Spokesperson, to be able to represent you and work with this core committee where we're demanding um, that we get a contract that recognizes how awesome you are. Um, I just want to start off with saying one of our slogans is APW, our union, our contract, our future, or words to remember as we head into opening day on June 22nd. This has been a challenging past year for all of us. You've all worked under challenging circumstances during the pandemic, increased parcel volumes, staffing issues, 
and the everyday difficulty you encounter at the post office. You are all declared essential and provided vital. Uh, you are all declared essential and proved vital to keeping Americans connected during the pandemic and delivering needed goods, checks, medication, and a sense of normalcy to every address in America on a daily basis. The American public still recognizes the Postal Service, the best and most trusted government agency in the country. We're here to remind management that, that what you've done, what you deserve, it's now time for management to acknowledge that through these contract negotiations. Sisters and brothers and family, the entire APW team is working daily preparing for these negotiations. President Demistine and I have been meeting on a regular basis to narrow our plan and focus. This has included multiple meetings with the Court and Negotiating Committee, the Craft Directors, and meeting with the Rank and File Bargaining Committee. The Craft Directors and their officers have been planning their approach to negotiations for the individual crafts, which they'll talk about more later, and updating President Demistine and myself regularly. The Core Committee is made up of the President, the Vice President, the Secretary, Treasurer, and the Craft Directors. Every one of them are working tirelessly for you and the APW and are very proud to be on the core committee to get you the contract you deserve. Pro proposals are being prepared. The data and research necessary to support our demands is being compiled, which is important because it's easy to say we deserve this, but then we need to show why we deserve that. So that the arguments we put in front of management uh, is, fat, is all supported in facts and data. We're much more armed with good data and facts, it will be more difficult for the Postal Service to dismiss any proposals we pre present. You can rest assured that we will leave no stone unturned in getting a good contract. Your negotiating team, your national officers, and staff will continue to put in the time and hard work to get you the contract you deserve. We need you to be part of these negotiations. We need your participation. Wear your union t-shirts and stickers. It's in that kind of participation that shows unity during negotiations. And let me tell you, I guarantee you that when the core committee and the president of this union calls for a day of action, just by wearing your sticker or your bands, if you're on the retail one year or your MBS driver, or wearing your t-shirts or whatever else it is, they pay attention about how much the membership are in tune with the national officers. So we need your help to get you the contract you deserve. We really want you to get involved with your contract action teams, and participate in the activities they have planned as well. Uh, on June 21st, uh, we have an open day rally, which Sister Powell will talk about in more depth in a minute. Then on June 22nd, uh, for the first time, you have the opportunity to zoom in and listen to the open day of negotiations. To show management our solidarity and our fight for a fair contract, let's make sure that we have that Zoom number filled. Like all negotiations, these negotiations will come with challenges. We expect the Postal Service to make the same demands as last contract that they always do about how they cannot afford pay increases. More than likely, they will propose very little in pay increases. The elimination of the current COLA practices, President Demistein pointed out, we're the only union that has done that. And as you'll see how important that is when, when September rolls around and this next COLA comes out, and you'll see that every member gets the same amount of cost of living, whether you're a level four custodian or a level 10 ET or a topped out level six or a level six with one month, everyone gets the top, the same amount of COLA. We're the only union that has that. Uh, the, the, they'll be pushing for more non-career and less career jobs, elimination of the no layoff clause and other regressive proposals that fail to reward and recognize your hard work. But when we collectively stand strong, we can beat back these demands. Just as we entered into these negotiations, the Postal Pulse Survey was in full swing and just concluded. I don't think it's any coincidence it is happening just before negotiations. You have been slammed by the Postal Service with their propaganda and your supervising reminding you to fill out the Postal Pulse Survey. You listened to us, you didn't return the Postal Pulse Survey for the Postal Service to hear your voice because your union is the one that speaks. And we speak through our conventions and the suggestions that you've gave us through the surveys. Thousands of you have responded to our request for participation in our priority survey. The APW's combined voice is shouting, we deserve a good contract. Our collective voice will not be drowned out by any survey as the fight for our future starts today. Remember, union strong all day long. And we're ready to go. And we're proud to be fighting for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vance. Uh, I have a question 
for you too, coming from John Cheney. Non-compliance is the number one problem these days. Stewards are having to file the same grievances over and over. Managers violate the contract and ignore grievance settlements without impunity. What will this next contract do about that? Thanks for the question. I'm not sure I can agree with you, Don, that the most, most important issue uh, in this contract is doing something about the non-compliance. That is an important issue to the APW. Certainly our members of, are, are concerned about no layoff, the 50 mile radius, the getting a good pay increase, protecting our COLA, uh, getting some more rights for a PTFs and, and a PSE conversion. So I can't agree with you about the number one problem. But it is an important problem because our contract to have meaning, it has to be complied with. And then when it isn't complied with, it needs to be pushed and enforced. So we will be looking, we're always looking a way to get make Article 15 better because uh, without, you know, justice delayed is justice denied. Uh, when we get a settlement, it's supposed to be final and binding. Um, Management sure as heck doesn't, if we lose a case in arbitration and the person's fired, et cetera, we don't keep saying they still need their job back. But when the Postal Service gets a settlement and too often to too many places, they try to find a way not to comply with that settlement. It's an important problem. We're aware of it. Our core committee has talked about it and we'll be looking for ways to strengthen Article 15. Um, and with that, I just want to take a moment to thank every off local officer and every steward that that works hard to enforce our contract because we can we can negotiate the best contractual language. We can negotiate numerous MOUs for protection. And if they're not enforced, they're just pieces of paper. And so I, I wanna take this opportunity to say, I do understand your frustration. And I, I wanna thank the stewards and officers for what they do. And we do need to push that management complies with the contract and complies with the agreements they reach. Thank you, Vince. Before we go to Thanks, poll question, thank you. Before we go to poll question number one, I wanted to let you know, as Vance mentioned, that the APW has been busy consolidating activities surrounding the opening day of negotiations and getting ready for our contract rally on Monday, June the 21st, beginning at 7 p.m. We're inviting you and your coworkers, your family, and your friends to join us virtually. The rally will start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and several of our labor allies, political leaders and community supporters will be there to show their support for the American Postal Workers Union. And Debbie, we're ready for poll question number one. Okay, great. So poll number one, how will you participate in the rally on June 21st? I will join you virtually by Zoom. I will join you virtually by phone, or I will not participate. Hopefully you're not picking, I will not participate. Participate some way, somehow. Thanks. Okay, while we're waiting for the results from our, our poll question number one, let me introduce to you a person I call the energizer, Bonnie, who's always ready to go and goes nonstop. That's none other than the director of the clerk division, Lamont Brooks. Thank you, Liz, and thank you, everyone. This is our third call, and as anybody know me, it's hard to get me to talk in three or four minutes. And because we've had extra time, I hope people will indulge me just for a moment. Uh, anybody that know me, I'm passionate about this. And it, Here's some things I want to challenge everybody to do. I want to thank everybody for all what everybody's doing, from the president of the union all the way down to an employee on the floor. But on behalf of the clerk division and my assistant, Sam Lesenby and Lynn Palace Barber, and the 40 MBAs that's been tasked to work on this negotiations. And I also want to recognize a former NBA who's been very helpful with me is Christine Pruitt. And I didn't see it before, I kind of slipped my mind, but I want to thank her. But here's what I want everybody to see. Between these calls, I go up on Facebook and I read, I try to get the pulse of the employees. And 
I want to challenge everybody to look at this as this is the first day of the rest of your life. You can't look at back at what you think we could have done, what we could have done better. We have to look at what we can do going forward. But I want to remind everybody the obligation and importance of what we're doing. I took the liberty to look back just to show you where we've gone as a union. And the reason I want to say that, because I want you to stay encouraged, and I want you to encourage your negotiators, as we have to be on one accord, because we're all fighting for the one same common goal. And before the postal strike, just to give you a history here, postal employees in 1969 made $8,442 a year. That was the salary. After the postal strike, in 1970, they made $9,657 an hour. The first contract that was negotiated, they made $11,073. I want everybody to understand, while we may not be where we want to be, we are a lot further than where we were. The contract in 1971 through 73 involved all the unions. And I'm not going to go through the list of them. The contract, as far as wages, hours, and working conditions, consisted of 54 total pages. That was it. Don't believe me. Research for yourself. The 2018 to 2021 contract just for the APW represent employees consisted of 473 pages. I'm saying all this to say, while it may not be perfect, your union is doing a lot and you as employees have done a lot and you have a lot to be proud of. But we're not stopping there, we're going for more gains. We have no intentions of con conceding a contract, but we also realize we have to negotiate a contract. So that's important. It's not a one-sided contract. We are very well prepared. Now, I will tell you this. I went back and looked at the questions you've asked on Forest the Clerk Division. Just so you feel at ease, there is not a question that's been asked that has not been addressed in a possible proposal. And you notice we said possible because what we will not do is we will not go for a lot of little petty of small things, let me change, it won't be petty, but in the scheme of things, things that may not be as important as the core things that President Mark Demonstein talked about. I do not want to receive a promise that we're fighting for the next 10 years to gain, and I'll give you an example, look at all the work givebacks we thought we had, but the Postal Service, we're fighting every step of the way to get it. And to this day, some 10 years later, we're still fighting. So I'm saying this, if the Postal Service cannot give us work rules and something with a sub substance that we can enforce, then guess what? To me, it's not worth the paper it's written on. So we're, we're looking at all the things we're saying, and I'm not gonna go over because Mark already went over. We want guarantees for PTFs. We want PTF and PSEs to get a days off. We don't want postmasters working any bargaining unit work. We, we won't penalize if you work people more than 60 hours because if you are, it means, that means you're inadequate staff. We know all this. We also know what automation is doing. We also know what technology is doing. So I'm saying all this to say we have been actively working and trust and believe this. We are prepared and you will be represented. We have tasked all the NBAs, all of them, not one, all of them. We've been involved. We've looked at how the contract and what we can do on behalf of employees and function four. We have looked at what we can do on behalf of employees and function one. We have looked at large offices. We have looked at small offices. We looked at call centers. We have looked at bulk mail. We have looked at data techs. We have looked at registry clerk. We have looked at lead clerks. We have looked at every single thing you can possibly look at, and we are prepared. Rest assured of that. We just need you to get behind us. And we will say this, even though we're in negotiations, we're not gonna stop enforcing the contract. 
So while we're negotiating, we expect the whole postal service to the contract we currently have, and we will be addressing those things simultaneously. So I'm saying all this to get behind your negotiations, negotiators. Encourage your employees to believe in the union because I can tell you this, what you have can be gone tomorrow. And no matter what you may want to get to, long as you're working to achieve the best contract we can get and everybody's doing their part, then I must always be proud of the APW and what we represent. Thank you. Thank you, Lamont. Unbeknownst to Brother Lamont, uh, Fabian, in his stuff he just addressed there and the things that he addressed, I think he unbeknownst to him himself answers your question, which had to do with Nithi's higher level and management doing the work. So with that, uh, we're gonna go to Vice President, see if we can get the results from poll vote number one. Okay, so looks like a lot of people are gonna be going to virtually by Zoom. That's 100%. That's excellent. Thank you guys. We can't wait to see you then on the Zoom on, on negotiation day, June 22nd. Deb, can we also do poll vote number two? Sure could. Let's get it up. Will you stand up for a good contract by wearing your sticker on June 22nd? Answer yes or no. Okay, while we wait for the results from uh, pro vote number two, uh, it's my pleasure at this moment to introduce to you Director Baladon, as he likes to be called, and he'll give you the correct pronunciation of his first name, I call him, Idaho Baladon, Director of the Maintenance Division. Director Baladon. Yes, Sister Paul. Good evening. Whatever you call me, or whatever Mars call me, I will answer. Wow. <laughs> Good afternoon, brothers and sisters of the American Postal Workers Union. I bring you greetings on behalf of Maintenance Division. My name is Idowu Balagan. The R is pronounced like an E, just like in Spanish. Idowu, that's the secret. Balagan, AKA Director Balagan, a proud member of Greater Los Angeles Area Local. On the line with me today, I have Assistant Directors, Jimmy Wildham and Terry B. Martinez. It is an honor of a lifetime and the privilege of my lifetime, twice lifetime, to stand before you as one of your rep representative of the core negotiation committee and your spokesperson at the maintenance table. You just don't know how excited I am. Uh, on another note, Brother Rema, who brought me to DC, passed away three years ago. Do you know that tomorrow, will be the three year anniversary, for lack of better word, the three years of passing. So I just wanna say, Brother Rima, thank you for your dedication to the Postal Service and to your family for sharing him with us. We miss him every day. And people don't let me forget, they say Rima is a great negotiator. I say, I'm not trying to be Rima, I'm just trying to be a better balladin, so bear with me. We have a maintenance team that is second to none, consisting of myself, Assistant Director Walden, Brother Martinez, MBA Dave Zanaki of Northeast Region, MBA Jason Tri of Eastern Region. And in preparation for Tuesday, June 2021 negotiation session, we have been working like the other craft tirelessly and meeting weekly. And I promise you, I've been calling these gentlemen daily. And we have been having a cohesive team, you know, meetings almost every day. Again, this is not just limited to our craft, so much more. 
uh, across APW. I'm also proud to tell you that we have been meeting regularly with the regional coordinators who are basically in charge of Article 12. And uh, we look forward to continue that relationship. And I also want to do a shout out to OMG, Brother Omar Gonzalez, for giving my first break in the union back in 1986 in Los Angeles, when he saw something in me and he pulled me up to run with him as maintenance crowd director. And I'm still in maintenance almost 40 years later. Thank you, OMG. Brothers and sisters, we, maintenance and APW, will not negotiate in public. So if you did not get the answer you were looking for, bear with us, email us, call us in private. Because my motto is very simple. If you ask me a public question, you will get a public answer, a guided one at that. And that's what you should be expecting. Because we do not, or I can say I do not have the luxury to speak my mind. My only luxury is to speak your guidance, what you want us to do. However, I promise you, the leadership and the maintenance council are fully engaged and we are prepared, we are fired, and we are ready to go. The maintenance council have been briefed constantly. So if you have other questions, feel free to reach out to our MBA. They've been involved like no other time before. So whatever we deal away with sharing, we are always sharing with them. And we thank you for being a phone-like contact because you are the face of the union. So I thank you for even staying up so late. And uh, I'll give it back to Sister Liz Powell. Thank you, Director Balagan. Uh, the 9 p.m. had no questions for the maintenance division. So we'll go back to the vice president here and see if we can get the results for poll vote number two. Okay. Wow, another 100%. Will you stand up for a good contract and wear your sticker? Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Spread the word, spread the stickers all over. Stand strong. Thanks, everybody. And that date is June the 22nd, week from today, next Tuesday. Next, I give you a brother. Uh, I call him the kingpin of the Motor Vehicle Division, better known to us as Director Michael Foster, Motor Vehicle Services. Mike. Thanks, Liz. Uh, and on behalf of the Motor Vehicle Craft, I wanna bring you greetings. And I wanna thank you for the opportunity and the tremendous responsibility of negotiating a contract, a fair and equitable contract for the motor vehicle craft uh, in the upcoming contract negotiations. Uh, we don't take this responsibility lightly. It's a tremendous amount of uh, responsibility to have to be able to, to negotiate for your family, for yourself, and for your coworkers. And we realize this, you know, uh, it's going to be a uh, arduous task. We have a new PMG that came from subcontracting, transportation. Uh, you can see by the way that the Postal Service is restructuring is that he certainly has a direction that he wants to go in and almost without exception, his, his direction is going to be counter to what our direction is going to be for the uh, bargaining unit employees. It's so many times that management attempts to reach their goals by making concessions or demanding concessions from the union and from our members of the benefits that we have struggled for, fought for, and demanded in the last 50 years of the existence of the American Postal Workers Union. 
it is sometimes insulting the way that uh, management can come to the table and just with the swoosh of a pen to eliminate so many of the benefits that uh, are in the favor of craft employees. But we're ready, you know, we're expecting, we're anticipating some of the proposals that management presented last uh, contract negotiations and also an interest arbitration, which the arbitration panel uh, soundly rejected. We're sure, sure that they're going to blow the dust off of those proposals and to uh, attempt to negotiate them or demand them again. Uh, you know, they didn't work last time and it's our intention that they won't work again. We have goals and we have demands and training is certainly one of those. Uh, many of the questions that have been asked today have been about training and, and we certainly agree that it's in the best uh, interest of the postal service and for the employees that adequate training, especially on the new fleet uh, and the upcoming fleet is that training should be an essential part of the employee's workday. Uh, we're ready, we have a committee, a negotiation committee of bargaining unit members, rank and file members, and also NBAs along with myself and my hardworking assistant MVS director, Brother Ken Prince. We had Brother Bruce Amy, Brother Dwight Shaw, and Brother William Wright as NBAs. And we also have uh, members from the field who uh, input is, such, is so very important because they're the ones that are actually on the workroom floor and realize what the needs and the uh, problems are with our members. We have Brother Dave Cook, Brother Daryl Goss, Brother Farron Williamson, and Brother Bill Wisner. These are the group of members that make up our committee. We are continuously researching and you know, preparing our contract proposals. We're fired up. We're ready to go. And just like the other crafts, and I want to commend all of the core negotiation uh, team. We have worked hard together. We're interacting together. We've uh, been through this struggle before together and we're fired up and ready to go. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to demand and to negotiate a fair and equitable contract for our members. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to be able for the last 20 years to sit at the motor vehicle craft and the main tables of the American Postal Workers Union in our struggle for equity and fair contract from the uh, United States Postal Service. I don't take this lightly and I'm humbled by the opportunity and I thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Foster. It's always be good to be fired up and ready to go. It's even better when we're fired up and ready to go and go in the same direction. We're yes, looking right. forward to the negotiations. We're always ready. We prepared to do whatever is necessary and always remember where we came from so that we'll know where we're going. And most importantly, we'll know when we get there. That's the important thing. Mike, there are two questions in the Q&A before you go away. One is from Brendan McCarthy, who's on this call. He wants to know, is there a possibility of this agreement that we can get MBS a scheduled examiner in each unit? The second question is from Donald Thomas, who's also on this call and wants to know, are upgrades being considered for the motor vehicle craft, the BMF, specifically diesel techs to level 10, all other technicians to level nine, and the parts room clerk one level. He's got it all laid out for you. 
Well, to answer the first question, uh, Sister Powell, is that uh, we presently have a dispute on zero basing and how management uh, does bargaining unit work in violation of Article 1.6. And I would recommend that you either contact us or contact your business agent and discuss this uh, dispute. And several years ago, we also uh, took to issue the uh, schedule examiners and how management had systematically eliminated or reduced the number of schedule examiners nationwide. And, and the Postal Service has agreed is that uh, the duties of the schedule examiner is bargaining unit work. So part of your hurdle has already been accomplished by this national level arbitration. What we should be doing is uh, enforcing the contract. Now, because that a lot of, of, the, of the duties have become uh, automated is that if you don't have enough uh, work beside, depending on the size of your PVS op, uh, operation, but we can demand that the work is done by bargaining unit employees. And what that does is stops uh, management from doing these duties. That should be our first goal is to stop them from doing it. Then what we can do is demonstrate that there's a need for other duties that the schedule examiner can do. But the first thing we need, we have been able to do is to demonstrate that this is bargaining unit work. And the second thing is, is that if there's not enough duty for a schedule examiner full time, it's still bargaining unit work. If you can get your foot in the door with having that being bargaining unit work, then normally, we can find other duties for that schedule examiner to do to ensure that it is a, a full-time position. There are uh, units or locals throughout this country that have been able to achieve the schedule examiner position. And uh, if you contact your NBA or not contact us, then you know we probably can give you some more suggestions or some more direction on which way to go. For the second question, as far as the upgrades, we're not going to be able to, to upgrade every position uh, in the craft this time. Uh, hopefully, the position that we can attempt to upgrade will be able to to kind of uh, rise the ship. You know, uh, if we can get some of the jobs like the uh, drivers or some of the mechanic jobs, which have been very difficult for the postal service to fill, then hopefully then those types of jobs can rise the entire ship. But we're not gonna be able to get all of the jobs upgraded. And, you know, that's what, a lot of the members have been requesting is all of the jobs or the majority of the jobs to be upgraded. But uh, if we can get some other things such as some of the entry level steps eliminated or uh, over the board type of a contractual raise, then I think that we'll still be successful in achieving a fair and equitable contract. Thank you, Brother Foster. President Demistein, your break is once again over. I have a, a couple of things for you. One of them is from Sister Mary Sitko, who wants to know, can we present at negotiations how much money the USPS has paid out in awards, grievance, settlement, to employees? Is that something we can present at the table? Um, it's certainly information we can ask for, and I think we already have asked for, and then we use that information to, uh, to uh, bargain with. 
it, it gets to the compliance issues. It gets to penalties if they don't comply. Uh, and we would much rather have the contract complied with and that money used to uplift all of us in terms of our wages and benefits. So yes, we, we, can, we can ask for that information. Uh, as I said, I think we already have, we will get it. And that'll be part of our discussions in the grand scheme of bargaining. I think it's a good question because an awful lot of money goes out the door that ought to be going into hiring and uplifting those of us who move in the mail for the people of this country. Okay. And the second thing that uh, I would ask you to speak of, uh, in the questions and uh, that was referred to us in some of the statements, we got a lot of questions from retirees that wanted to know if this contract impacted them in any way and what were we doing about them. We also had a question from retirees who wanted to know uh, the Christmas help. How long and how many hours could they work and would it impact their retirement? Okay, so starting with the holiday help, um, we, we, the, the time does have to be kept up on a certain amount of money, but the way we had it set up in the past, I think it was for three pay periods, maybe four, all of our retirees were fine. Many did it, and it does has no impact on the retirement, and we purposely addressed it in such a way that it would not. Uh, so we should be fine there. We're trying to press management to get started earlier this year. Uh, and make sure that they have the right kind of staffing for the holidays. Obviously, it did not happen last year. Uh, and the Postal Service, the workers and the people of this country have uh, suffered. So we, we uh, and, sir, and there's no better person if they want to do it voluntarily uh, to come back and help with the holidays than our good retirees who understand the system and know how to move uh, that mail. So we, we will certainly keep the retirees uh, uh, up to date on the holiday help uh, hiring. Um, the question of contract negotiations and retirees, the honest answer is there's very little we can negotiate with management uh, in our collective bargaining agreement that has impact on retirees. There's a few areas such as the letters of demand and because sometimes after people retire, they get letters of demand and we put we improved that in the contract in terms of the time people have to file grievances, the right to file grievances. Uh, so there are a few things like that. But frankly, and let me just say, look, we, uh, a huge salute to our retirees and their passion for the cause, uh, and and their their interest in making sure that we have a robust, vibrant public postal service, not just for the active employees, but also helps protect the retirees as as well. But most of the uh, uh, impact that we have on the retirees are really done through our political legislative work and to make sure the benefits are protected and, through, and to try to improve certain benefits that retirees lost years ago in the legislative arena, such as the windfall issue on social, on where social security, earned social security retiree benefits were reduced for those of us who were in civil service. That was wrong. We're still trying to work on, on fixing that. But honestly, in the, in, the, in the negotiations, wages, hours, and condition of employment deals with the active workforce primarily. Thank you, President Thanks, Jim and Thank you. Before I go to our um, support services director, there's a couple of statements in our q and A's. So to my good friend, Dr. Cleon Williams from the Philadelphia area local, uh, the first one that you asked is basically a statement. I will see that it's referred to the appropriate person. And the second part that you gave me was a question mark. You're going to have to be more explicit. And then the last one, I just sent you a response back so you can let me know uh, what you're talking about. And if it's appropriate, I will make sure that I get that question to one of our negotiators. Uh, to those of you who are sending me messages that you raised your hand, we are in a webinar and uh, raised hands are not recognized during this webinar. If you have something you need to impart to us, we need to type it into the Q&A. Unfortunately, if you're Facebook or the telephone or the APW website, that cannot be done. And we apologize for that. So with that, I bring you the Director of Support Services, Brother Steve Brooks. Good evening, brothers and sisters. 
I want to say it's a privilege and an honor to be able to represent the members of the APWU in contract negotiations. As my fellow craft directors have stated, we're prepared, we're fired up, we're ready to get into the negotiation process. President Demonstein and Industrial Relations Director Van Zimmerman, they've held core committees, meetings and individual meetings with the craft directors. We've flushed out everything that we want to present in uh, negotiations and uh, we're ready to go with those. I've been working very closely with uh, Support Services NBA, Judy McCann, as well as the local representatives under Article 40, Aaron Brown, and Clint Holbert under Article 41 to address all the issues that they have uh, and they want it uh, resolved in this contract. They've solicited ideas from their membership and they brought them forward and we've implemented those into proposals. We re re reviewed all of the issues, we've prioritized the issues, we've developed the language that we need and put it in proposal format. format. So now we're just ready to present it to management and get their responses. Again, I just wanna thank everyone for the opportunity to represent the APW members in this fight for better working conditions, better wages, better benefits. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Brooks. Um, our DIR, your break is over. One more question for you, Ben. All right, I'm here. All right. All right. It is from Harris West. And he wants to know, is it possible to have the USPS pay interest on all delayed payments on grievances and pay adjustments when it is clear that the management representative is stalling the process? Can we negotiate anything that can help fix that problem? So the question is, so, so for removals and discipline, it's automatic that you get interest. Um, Unfortunately, for those, it's the federal judgment rate. And with what's been going on the, over the last numerous years um, with interest rates, et cetera, the federal is very, very little. So it is a, a, a small deterrent. Um, I understand that there is a problem with uh, settlements being complied with. Uh, I believe this, the action that we're looking at. So I appreciate the question. I understand the problem. I agree with you. There's a problem there. Uh, I believe the possible solution is not interest for the other cases because of what the federal judgment rate is and the T-bills are is very low. But I'm going to put a little bit more teeth in the fact of compliance and when the paperwork has to be submitted and when once that's submitted is you could get a pay advance. Um, so. Um, it is possible we could uh, negotiate uh, uh, interest and we'll, we'll think about that, um, but I'm aware of the problem. We've talked about the problem and we think there's actually a, maybe a better, stronger solution that we're going to try to push for as a possible agreement in this contract. So thanks, great job identifying an issue that it does affect a lot of members and is very frustrating. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Van. Uh, Brother Lamont Brooks, one final question for you. Involving registry clerks. Uh, the question is, they want to know if there's, if <laughs> they don't know if I'm tight on, but they do want to know, are you going to negotiate higher level and work clothing allowance for registry clerks? There is, there is no intent to negotiate either one of those because we're trying to get better wages for all clerks not a specific one as far as registered clerks uh no we're not going to do anything there because there's nothing specific that will require them to get a uniform allowance uh, if they were working the window to sufficient hours in accordance with 931 they would qualify no matter whether there's a registered clerk or a mail processing clerk in the back of the house so at this time there is no no interest at this time to negotiate for a specific category as we're trying to get pay raises across the board for all clerks. Thank you, Lamont. Appreciate that. President Demistein, another one for you. Is there any thought to include language that colors will be extended beyond the end of the contract and remain in effect until a new contract is in effect? Uh, 
Well, that's another good question because when a contract expires, uh, most provisions carry forward, such as the grievance procedure, seniority and bidding, holidays, and so on. What doesn't carry forward is the pay raises and the COLA. Uh, so I think that you, it's hard to negotiate something for after the contract expires. So what we've done is a few things to try to deal with this issue. One is, and Brother Zimmerman pointed this out in an earlier meeting, we purposely timed the last two contracts to end in September to capture that last COLA. So the COLA that uh, ends in July and we get in uh, December uh, will we'll be there, whether we reach a new agreement voluntarily or whether we end up in interest arbitration and it takes longer. And so then that gives us a good six months before the next COLA would be due uh, if we if, if we don't get a voluntary agreement and things are delayed. Normally when they're delayed, if we win it, then it's retroactive. But it's hard in advance to negotiate, to, to get something in the contract about what happens when the contract does expire. We have asked in the past to, for management to continue those things, uh, but they, they, they don't have to. So it's incumbent upon us to one, do everything we can to get a solid, a uh, fair, good union contract on a voluntary basis. And if we can't, we also have plans to try to speed up the process if we go into interest arbitration. So it doesn't take another year or year and a half. Uh, and we already have some plans and some thinking in place to, to try to make sure that process happens quicker and we get a final result sooner, hopefully before the next COLA would be due. Thank, thanks, Liz. Thank, Hope that answers. Thank you, President Demistein. Uh, to Dr. Cleon Williams, I am referring your question to Brother Mike Foster, who I'm sure will be in touch with you for a response. So don't think we've forgotten you. It will be addressed. Thank you for the question. All righty. We're in good time here. It is 10 12. Before I forget, let me thank our interpreters for being with us this evening. Uh, we always attempt to provide a service for all of our employees so that each of them are able to take uh, participate in whatever it is we do. Let me also thank all of those who assisted us with this call, starting with the two executive assistants to the Secretary Treasurer, Hannah Decker and Ned August Taylor, uh, to Kenny Washington, our IT technician, to Marika Smith, who graduated from being an IT technician to being senior manager of the per cap department. And mucho thanks to Graham Kopp, who is the digital, digital media manager of communications department for the American Postal Workers Union, who made it possible for us to live stream this on whatever live streaming events we have and making it available to you on the APW webpage. Thank you very much, Graham. We appreciate your help. And now before we come to the executive vice president to some very brief remarks, we're going to ask for some brief remarks from our regional coordinator who have been with us all evening, starting with, let me see if they lined up themselves again. Starting this time with AJ Jones, Eastern Region Coordinator. Thank you, Liz. Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here with us on this call. We've, this is our third call today. And they've been very successful and I'm very proud to say that uh, we've connected with the members at the front line. You all should be commended for taking the time to get on this call and be with us. And I would like to thank all the negotiating committee, the core, the NEB, resident officers and everyone. And that includes all to our front line. We're all very important to this process. And if we stay together, we'll win together and we look forward to it. So you all have a very good night. Thank you for joining us and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, AJ. To my sister, Tiffany Foster, Northeast Regional Coordinator. Good evening. Thank you, Liz. Good evening, sisters and brothers. I bring you greetings from the Northeast region. Um, I hope you and your family are safe and well during these times. Thank you. Um, as my brother AJ said, thank you for attending the town hall. And I will repeat what everyone else has said that our strength in numbers, our visible strength, sends a powerful message to management on the workroom floor 
and our strength in numbers, one team doing it together, rowing the same way. So continue to participate, um, be involved in your union, encourage others to get involved, um, show management that you support your union, you know, and your contract negotiating team. Show them that we are all in, in the line, in alignment and working towards the same goal. Thank you all for everything that you do every day. Um, and thank you for everything that you do for the APWU. Thank you for the opportunity to represent you. It is an honor and a privilege. Be safe, be well. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, sweetie. Central Region Coordinator, Sister Sharon Stone. Is my sound on? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Uh, as the Northeast and Eastern Region coordinators put it so adequately, I will say ditto. <laughs> Save me some words. I have appreciated today. I have to give thanks to Ms. Powell and her staff. I don't know how they do it, but we couldn't do it without her. So thank you. Thank you for everyone that is tuning in from the locals and the other offices. I hope you got some vital information that will be helpful. And also to let you know, we're always available for you if you need us through email, phone calls, whatever you need. Thank you again for being on. Thank you, Sharon. Brother Kenneth Beasley, Southern Region Coordinator. Yeah, a greeting from the uh, Southern Region, everyone. And um, I kind of it was laughing at what Sharon said. You know, how you do it. I, Sharon, I think they broke the mold with these people. <laughs> ain't, no, <laughs> ain't no more like them, I'll tell you that. They went all this hard work going in, into this. But, uh, but anyway, uh, I want to say this, that uh, the same thing I said before, I kind of said it in reference to the sport, uh, like into the sports. So when you got that crowd with you, and I'm saying that to the members. If, if you're in solidarity with uh, uh, with us and with the team and the negotiating team, then that is the I call it the six man. Y'all heard that that comes six man in basketball. I mean, I mean that makes all the difference in the world when you got that solidarity. You got the people behind you, and, uh, and so we just want to keep that up, keep everybody motivated. And I said like uh, Liz Power and. Uh, Liz Power Obama said, uh, fired up, <laughs> give it on. <laughs> anyway, thank you. <laughs> and y'all have a good night. <laughs> and it's all there forever. Thank you, Kenny. Fired up and ready to go. Fired <laughs> up and ready to go. That's it. Last but not least, the team Western Region Coordinator, Omar Gonzalez. And y'all noticed, I don't know if you noticed, when uh, Director Balagon says OMG. A lot of us think of that as oh my God, but those are basically Omar Gonzalez's initial. He is Omar M. Gonzalez. Take it away, brother. Thank you, thank you. And greetings from the West. I too want to commend everybody uh, for joining. Um, <clears throat> and you know, you you might have said, well, wait a minute, we've been listening for quite some time, and I didn't get very much out of this. Actually, if you really listen closely, you got a lot. But like Brother Balagon says, we don't negotiate in public. Uh, we can only give out so much information. And I tell you, um, I, I even though I'm not a core member of the negotiating team, I'm a member of the team. And we all got to be team members. But it's, you know, it seems somehow that there's not that level of energy that we've had in previous contract negotiations. Well, that's incumbent upon you, those of you that listen today, to spread the word, to spread the word that we need solidarity on the work floor. Uh, we need to be united. Uh, we are working, as Brother uh, Dingston says, to not just keep what we have, but to build on it and enhance. Oh, and in order right. to do that, it's going to take every single one of us, every single one of you. So again, thank you for participating. Uh, Stay tuned for more of these uh, as time goes and things get uh, close to the midnight hour. We will be sharing a lot more. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. We appreciate those. Uh, my staff and I don't know how we do either. We wake up at three o'clock in the morning and we think of things to do. Hopefully this has been very beneficial to uh, our membership 
I know it's been a learning experience for us. So with that, before I uh, close out, I'm gonna bring you the Executive Vice President, Debbie Soretti, for some brief remarks. So everybody, thank you so much for staying on board. And you know, to do three of them to, in one night is pretty good. Um, hopefully we've reached a lot of people and inspired. Um, this year we are celebrating our birth as APWU members. And you know, back in 1971, that's when we got a contract as well. And um, I'm very proud of that. And I'm remembering back in those days, in the 70s, in the 80s, um, what it was like on the workroom floor when it was getting close to negotiations and when the contract was going to expire. So um, the excitement that most of us did was um, at the midnight hour, we would get a lot of workers that would come over to the union office and everybody would want to know what happened, what happened, did we, did we, did the a contract expire or did we get a contract? Um, and so it was, a, it was a lot of excitement. Also during that time, um, when they were negotiating, we would have a um, phone banking kind of a center where everybody could call in and find out how things were going um, from time to time. And we've been doing that as well, you know, over the last few years to try to keep everybody on board, to keep everybody excited and updated as to how things are progressing. So it was really important back then. It was really important also with the uh, buttons, the t-shirts, um, wearing those and, and making sure that management saw, you know, like the whole workroom floor with all of our shirts. Um, if you were a window clerk, well, you get the wristband. Um, but really the bottom line was to show our union pride and how we support our negotiators at headquarters. It really does make a difference. And it's been that way for a lot of years. So we're hoping this year that we'll get a lot more workers on board. Um, one of the other things that we would do would be to um, make picket signs. You know, if, if we ended up that we didn't get a contract and the contract expired and maybe there was an extension, we wanted to be out there and let the public know, let our communities across the country know that we were having struggles with the postal service in being able to get a contract and we want to get them on our side and to be there to support us as we go through um, these extensions so you know the whole power base is so important to build up um, when uh you hold on to this this uh, contract that we have if you've ever for those of you who have never even looked at one you should get one ask talk to your local um, this contract, it's so amazing to think. And I, I would say that Lamont really um, hit it right on target when he talked about, you know, way back in the 70s, it was a very small uh, national agreement, but today it's quite large. And we, we always improve every single contract we've been trying to, to improve and get better and better. And so there's, that's the same thing that we're doing now. Um, and your union involvement on the workroom floor is so, so important. We need our contract, but we really need you more. We, you guys are the blood, the sweat, the tears of why we try to improve this contract. So it's, it's our Bible on that workroom floor. And um, the only way we're gonna be able to improve it and know exactly what you need is to make sure that you guys are enforcing this contract and um, your grievances, they help big time. Um, those are things that we look at as a core committee to just see um, uh, what kind of problems that we really have um, all over the country. So it's so important to get your voices heard, to be able to file those grievances. And like I said, um, really make sure that you're enforcing the contract. Uh, we know last year has really been hard, um, still a little bit hard. Um, it hasn't been easy being an essential worker, um, being exposed to the COVID. Um, and there's a lot of hostile work environment going on all over the 
country, but you know, we have, like Mark said, we've been having a hostile work environment for a long time. Each time we get a new contract, we try to do something better. And again, we're gonna work on it again to try to get something to try to get management to take some actions and make sure that they're just not moving people around from place to place so they can continue to harass. Um, our core committee, um, all of them are so magnificent. We've got subcommittees, we've got great officers, um, we've got the NBAs working, the rank and file committee, and our APWU staff. So they're all working tirelessly during this negotiations and, and all that's really left is to get your participation on the workroom floor. So it's very important to us. And uh, don't forget that you can sign up and work with the local contract action team to try to help spread that excitement around to other workers on the workroom floor so that they can get excited about this wonderful book that we have, this contract. Um, and again, you know, it just strengthens our family and it strengthens our, uh, it strengthens our ability to really get what we want out of a contract. Um, so I hope that you're going to stand with us side by side, union strong, and you know, we can't make a difference without you. We need all of you. We need the locals. We need the state. We need the officers. We need our retirees. We need our auxiliary. We need the members. We need the new members and we need the seasoned members. So all of you can make a difference. And we're just so glad that you got on board and that you were here for the webinar and keep hanging on and standing strong with us. And I think we're gonna turn out just fine with a wonderful contract, but it really is, we need your help now. So thank you. Thank you, Sister Soretti for those brief remarks. And now sisters and brothers, before we wrap this up, it is my honor and my pleasure, as always, to introduce to you and bring to you for some closing remarks, the president of the American Postal Workers Union, AFL-CIO, Mark Demistein. Hey, thank you, Sister Powell and APW family. I'll be very brief. Um, uh, Sister Debbie referred to our birthday, our 50th anniversary. We can we argue at headquarters whether it's a birthday or an anniversary, I think it's both. Uh, but my point is this, uh, Mo Biller was president for 40% of the time of our existence as the APW. And he had a saying that was spot on then and spot on now. And it's simply put, the struggle continues. And the struggle does continue. Negotiations have never been easy. They never will be easy. It's part of the opportunity that struggle can bring progress uh, and enough struggle will bring progress. So we look forward to the opportunity. Uh, I, I think that your committee is very unified, very determined, but brothers and sisters, when I'm at the negotiating table as the lead negotiator, I'm really not negotiating for you because I'm not a social worker. I'm negotiating with you. We're negotiating together. And that strength, that collective voice, that solidarity has to be brought to the table. And you can be at the table with all of us by participating in the contract campaign and the, and the collective action teams, whether it's stickers, whether it's shirts, whether it's wristbands, whether it's getting with our friends and our allies of a grand alliance to save the public postal service will bring help bring real power and leverage to these negotiations, whether it's joining informational pickets, if we do that. You all know by getting on this call, uh, getting on this webinar, that the union's not a spectator sport. Heads off to you, you're involved. Uh, but we have to impress upon all our co-workers and our co-members that we gotta get out of the stands and join a team because that's where we're really gonna have the power to win. So with that, I'll simply end with, uh, you know, our, our, our main union slogan is in our unity lies our strength. That's always important. And it's particularly important as we face these challenging negotiations, but negotiations full of opportunity to continue to build a better life for postal workers, our families, and our communities. So with that, sisters and brothers, solidarity forever. I'm going to turn it back to Sister Powell to close it out. 
And thank, thank and you, we, we really appreciate everybody joining in tonight. Thank you, President Demistine. Before we close out, sisters and brothers, and I don't want to be remiss in saying, on behalf of myself and I'm sure all of us on this call, we thank and appreciate everything that you do on a daily basis. I always say if there was no you, there would be no us. And I really do appreciate it. Now, before we end, I want you to remember that in the last round of our 2018 negotiations, our fighting today for a better tomorrow contract campaign, along with the enthusiastic participation of so many local leaders and members, address the importance of a member mobilization approach to winning power and building the strength of our union. We have mailed each member directly to your home two stickers for the purpose of sticking with your union on June the 22nd, 10 a.m. opening day of the contract negotiation. Additional stickers have been sent to each local and should have arrived by now. Uh, I always uh, say that slogan came from Omar Gonzalez, I'm sticking with the union. Uh, I'm stuck on you. Uh, we would like to be stuck on you. That goes back a ways, but please wear those stickers, encourage your or coworkers, encourage your friends, whoever. Unfortunately for our window clerks and our MVS uh, members, you cannot wear a sticker because you have to wear your uniform. So along those lines, if APW has ordered wristbands. They will be mailed to your local. Please contact your local to get a wristband because you can wear that to show that you support your support for these negotiations as we're sure that you already do, but we would love for you to have a wristband. Enough wristbands are being mailed to each local so that anyone other than will be able to have one. So make sure you request that from your local. Uh, don't want to forget, and I, I tell my president, July the 1st, 1971, we will be having a birthday party. 50 years of progress. He calls it an anniversary. I call it a birthday party. We have decided it's birthday party slash anniversary. You see, I put birthday party first, slash anniversary. So we're looking forward to you. We'll be sending you information on that real soon. Make sure you watch for the link. Opening day, as I stated before, was the 22nd of June, but we, the night before, we're having our contract kickoff rally, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We want you to be there with us because we will have lots of supporters there. We have a couple of Congress people coming. We have always our very good friend whose parents worked in the Postal Service. Actor, activist Dana Glover will be joining us. So tune in. We're going to have an exciting evening. And once again, to the business agents, the resident officers, all the supporters, the auxiliaries, the retirees department, the uh, contract action team, everybody who's been here with this, this evening, tell everyone, we're union strong all day long. And the fight for our future starts today. God bless each and every one of you. Stay safe. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you somewhere in the very near future hopefully sooner rather than later. Take care of yourselves and thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of the American Postal Workers Union, the greatest union there is. Have a good night and thank you. Thanks, Interpreter. Good night, everybody. Good night.